If you're looking to get some smooth, buttery bokeh and you have no idea where to start, this episode's for you. Three, two, one. Here we go! Hi and welcome or welcome back to DIY Film with Merle Becker, the channel where I help you make better videos. I've got a bonus tip for you at the end of the video, so don't you go nowhere. All right, so you're sitting there watching your favorite YouTuber go on and on about their favorite lens and they're saying it's the best because it's got great bokeh. And then they even go on to talk about bokeh balls. Um, what? Up to this point, you thought Boca was just a place in Florida where your aunt with the big sunglasses would vacation in the winter. And Boca balls? Well, that just sounds like maybe some sort of workout equipment or maybe a kid's toy or, geez, who knows. So let's set you straight. The term bokeh, spelled B-O-K-E-H, actually comes from the Japanese word bokeh, which means blur or haze. And some sources also say that it means out of it or idiot, but I'm gonna go with blurred. And the way to pronounce it correctly is bow as in bow tie and ke as in rhymes with meh. Not really bokeh. And bokeh, when you hear a photographer or videographer talk about it, refers to the way a particular lens renders the out-of-focus areas of an image. Put simply, it's how a lens makes the blurry parts of your image look, especially when it comes to points of light. So, for example, you see the shot of someone scrolling on their phone. And you'll notice that the hand is in focus, but the lights in the background are blurry. And not only are the lights blurry, but those points of light form round little balls. And those, my friend, are the bokeh balls. And sometimes photographers even prefer a certain shape of bokeh ball. Sometimes they want them to be more round, sometimes more oval. And the shape of the bokeh ball is dictated by the lens. So that's bokeh, not to be confused with the place in Florida. So why does everyone like bokeh? Well, in photography and videography, your aim should be to draw your viewer's eye to your subject, whether it's a person or an object or just an area of the frame you think your audience should pay attention to. And one of the easiest and most visually appealing ways to do this is to keep your background out of focus and your subject in focus. Or in other words, produce a shallow depth of field. And a shallow depth of field combined with a lovely bokeh makes for a visually appealing image that draws your viewer's eyes to the subject. You see it in Hollywood movies and car commercials all the time. So yeah, everyone wants their footage to look like a big budget production. And one easy way to do that is to throw in some bokeh. So how do you get bokeh? For those of you looking to get great bokeh in your footage, I came up with this list of five things you can do to get great bokeh in your video. So let's go. Number one, use lights in your background. Okay, this is an obvious one. Throw some lights in the background that can produce those lovely bokeh balls. Christmas lights, street lights, sun coming through the trees. Just make sure you've got some lights to work with. Number two, move your subject away from the background. The more distance you have between your subject and your background, the easier it will be to get that blurry background. Do a little test for yourself. As you pull your subject away from the background, you'll see that the background's getting blurrier. So move the subject away from the background to produce a nice shallow depth of field. Number three, choose a lens with a long focal length. Focal length, technically, it's the distance between where your light is converging in your lens and your camera's sensor. And lenses are usually named after their focal lengths. So one way you can make sure you have a long focal length is to obviously choose a lens that allows for this. And then to get the most blur, zoom into your subject or back up and zoom in with the lens that you already have to increase the focal length. Do either of these and you should see that background getting blurrier and a bit more bokeh. Number four, shoot with a low f-stop. The lower the f-stop, the wider your lens opening is gonna be. And the wider the lens opening is, the shallower the depth of field is gonna be. And to get great bokeh, you want that shallow depth of field. Now, some lenses allow you to use a lower f-stop than others. For example, my lowest f-stop lens happens to be my 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 lens. 
and you can tell from the name that it allows me to bring that f-stop all the way down to f2.8, which is pretty low. At that setting, the lens is pretty wide open. To illustrate, watch the background as I lower the f-stop. This is f22, f16, f11, f8, f5.6, f4, and finally f2.8. So if I'm going for some nice bokeh, I'd choose my 24 to 70 f2.8 and my f-stop setting would be, you guessed it, f2.8. Number five, choose a camera with a large sensor. Now, many of you probably don't have multiple cameras at your disposal, but knowing how sensor size affects focal length and bokeh is helpful nonetheless. And maybe it'll help you pick out your next camera when it's time to upgrade. So some mirrorless cameras have a cropped sensor and some have a full frame sensor. Usually the less expensive mirrorless cameras have a good sensor, but they'll crop your image a bit. And the more expensive models will have a bigger sensor or a full frame sensor with no image cropping. So for example, my Canon M50 has a cropped sensor and my Canon R6 here has a full frame sensor. And when it comes to bokeh, the full frame sensor camera allows you to get a longer focal length with the same framing as a cropped sensor. That being said, however, it's totally possible to get great bokeh with a cropped sensor camera like the M50. But as mentioned, if you're starting to get serious about your cameras, you should know that there is a difference when it comes to sensor size and bokeh. Okay, so there you go. Five tips you can use to get great bokeh. To review, five things you can do to get great bokeh when shooting video are use lights in your background, move your subject away from the background, choose a lens with a long focal length, shoot with a low f-stop, and choose a camera with a large sensor. All right, let's do the tip. Getting lovely bokeh and a shallow depth of field should be on your mind from the get-go. This means when you're choosing a location for your shoot, look for a larger space if possible. Because, as mentioned, to get great bokeh, you gotta pull your subject away from the background, and sometimes back up to get that zoom. And if you choose a tiny room, you're obviously not gonna be able to do either. So aim for the larger location, or shoot your scene outside if you can, because the farther you can get from those lights, the more buttery that bokeh is gonna be. Okay friends, I hope some of this gets you closer to achieving bokeh beauty. If you do try out any of these, be sure to post a link to your clip in the comments so we can check out your work. And as always, if you found any of this helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when the next one is posted, and I will catch you next time.